In this video, I want to show you another approach to this exercise, which some people might find simpler and clearer. Obviously, you have to be a bit practiced with Boolean logic to be able to dash this stuff off quickly. But there is another way we could tackle this that may be more intuitive to some people. Let's get rid of this logic bit here and leave in place only the code that acquires the Boolean inputs that we need. Then I'm gonna say at the start, can rent equals false. So we have that already declared and assigned a value. And now we just wanna figure out if that should be changed or how it should be changed. So we can break this down into two cases as before. Either they're a student or they're not, and different rules apply for students than non-students in this exercise. So let's say if is student, colon, and then I'm gonna say, okay, well, students cannot rent the property if they smoke or have pets. So let's say here, and I'll, I'll have a nested if. If does smoke or has pets, in that case, can rent equals false, which is the default anyway. Else can rent equals true. So we've solved the same problem for the case where they're a student. I've just used if statements in here. I've used a nested if statement nested within the other if statement. Let's tackle the case where they're not a student. So that's gonna be else because there's nothing else they can be other than a student. If they're not a student, then we put them in the general category of person. And the rules that apply then are they can rent a property if they smoke or have pets, but not both. So then we can say, if does smoke and has pets, can rent equals false. Else, so in this case, they're not a student, and it's not true that they smoke and have pets as well. So in this other case, we can say can rent equals true. And though we've solved the problem, right? And I've simply used more if statements and less sort of concentrated Boolean logic. It is ultimately still the same logic. It's just written in a different way using nested ifs. So let's see if it works. Are you a student? Let's say I am a student. Do you have pets? Yes. And then do you smoke? No. So I can't rent in that case. So what if I'm a student and I don't have pets, but I do smoke, still can't rent. If I'm a student, I have to answer no to both of these questions before I can rent it. Now, if I'm not a student, if I have pets and I don't smoke, it's fine. If I'm not a student and I don't have pets, but I do smoke, it's fine. If I'm not a student, I have pets and smoke, then it's not fine. So you can't do both if you're not a student. What about if I'm not a student and I don't do either of those things, then of course I can rent it. So it works. And I would suggest if you haven't already written your program in this way, then put this code away and see if you can write it like this yourself. It requires a little bit of thought, but that's good for you. <laughs> so basically the more time you spend thinking about this stuff and trying out solutions, the better. That's what's gonna make you a good programmer, ultimately. But if you're already bored with this particular topic, there's no harm in just moving on from it, but it is a good idea to be practicing this stuff at some stage somehow. Hello, you've been watching a free sample from my Python and Machine Learning for Complete Beginners course. I'm uploading enough videos from the start of the course to get you started with Python and machine learning. The full course is absolutely massive. If you're interested in it, please click the link in the description. The complete course covers not only basic Python, but also some fairly advanced Python, even some desktop programming stuff, 
and then goes on to machine learning and artificial intelligence. Until next time, happy coding.